Hello guys and welcome to today's Los Blancos podcast. Today I'm going to be discussing the Real Madrid versus Man City game in preview as well as we will also be discussing Rudiger signing which has accelerated over the last few days. Now Sean's not here but go drop him a follow in the description below and um, if you don't know who Sean is it's Real Madrid committee on Instagram um, or you could just go into the description drop him a follow he posts the best Real Madrid news daily every single day he posts and it's it's some of the best stuff on Instagram so go drop him a follow but let's get right into today's Los Blancos podcast okay so the first part of today's podcast is the Man City preview of course now we're playing Man City in the Champions League on Tuesday night at uh, at the Etihad Stadium. Now, this is going to be a huge, huge game, isn't it? Um, semi-finals, it's always going to be a huge occasion uh, for the players, for the fans, for the club, all in all. Um, but I think throughout this season, we have been a little bit lucky. Um, you know, the, you can't attribute the, the whole... The whole us, us going through due to the, the the club prestige and all that, we can't really. You've got to say that we have been lucky at times to go through the season. Now, um, obviously the with the with the Chelsea game, we we were quite lucky throughout the whole game to so that Chelsea wouldn't go through because Chelsea created more chances than us. Chelsea created better chances than us, um, and all in all, you know they they were. They were the better team than us, to be totally honest. Um, Chelsea were quite unlucky to not to not go through in the end, um, because you know they only scored three goals and somehow uh, a late Rodrigo's goal, as well as a, a goal by Benzema into extra extra time, uh, that obviously kept us in the game. Now, with Man City, I struggle to see how they don't score those chances that Chelsea missed, but you know we're gonna have to hope. That that doesn't happen, and we have to defend better because you know hoping is not good enough at this level. You can't just hope that you know the, the, the best team in the world does not score, does not turn up and score against you. That's the truth. Man City are the best team in the world. They play the best football. They play, um, they play like the best team. They play. They score the most goals. Uh, and really solid defensively. Now. You're gonna have to you're gonna have to defend well against them, look. And I think largely what we're gonna have to do during this game is do what Atleti did in the first leg. You know, people criticised Atleti for parking the bus uh, really deep. You know, eleven men in the box, but ultimately that's what we're gonna have to do because Man City are not gonna give us the ball too much on too many occasions. Um, so we're gonna have to really be careful here. Um, but let's run you through. The Man City predicted uh, lineup. Now this is going to be ninety nine percent wrong because it's just impossible to 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 you know to to just to be able to 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 see what Man City will pick. It's just you you don't know what will happen because you know ultimately there are just too many options and Pep just loves to just. Put put this guy there and then put this guy there. So it's just going to be impossible. So most of this may be wrong. Um, but I think largely throughout the defence and midfield, I think the, the remaining patterns will be will be there. Um, I think, you know, Cancelo is going to miss this game due to suspension. And um, De Bruyne, uh, Stones and Walker are all doubts uh, due to injury. So... You know, this is going to be a bit, a bit tough. Maybe, maybe you know, some of these players miss out. This first leg is going to be really important then. So, goalkeeper Edison, and that's that's going to be one hundred percent certain, unless something horrible happens to Edison. Um, right back Nathan Ake, that's going to be a real target spot, which I'll get onto in a second. Um, the centre backs uh, Ruben Diaz and Imeric Laporte. Left back will be Alexander Zinchenko. DM uh, will be Rodri, centre mids, Gundogan and Bernardo Silva. And then the front three will most likely be a fluid front three of Gabriel, Jesus, uh, Riyad Mahrez and Phil Foden. And we'll start with um, that front three because the uh, the greatest power of City is their unpredictability. And you just don't know who they're going to play because each, each forward provides something different. And I know Pep's going to think of something, you know, this this uh, Madrid player, a left back, Ferlo Mendy, is not exactly the uh, the most comfortable on possession. So we're going to have to use a guy who's brilliant at pressing. Boom, there you go. Gabriel Jesus is right there for you to for you to use there. And, you know, Gabi Jesus has been, has been um 
he's been a thorn in Real Madrid's side. I remember two years ago when when he he really hurt us in that game uh, at, at the at the Bernabeu, where um, obviously uh, we gave we gave away the pen, um, and you know that red card. I, I, I still do not think it was a red card. I still hate the fact the referee gave the red card for that. It was just clearly to me not a red card. Um, but also in addition, he scored the goal that 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 um ultimately done us in there. So ultimately, Gabby Jesus has good memories of playing us, and also you know he has good memories of last this weekend because he scored four against Watford uh, yesterday yesterday um at noon, uh, and you know he was absolutely brilliant uh, throughout the game. Um, it wasn't just the goals; it was the build-up play. He he assisted the the goal for Rodri as well, um, from Rodri's thunderbolt. Uh, and I think Gabi Jesus is going to have to have a big game for Man City because he's he is one of their biggest threats. He's come they've come into the lineup uh, over the last few games, and he's been e- excellent for Man City. So this is something that Pep Guardiola has done perfectly for them, and you know he's going to be a really a really bad, good weapon for them. Um, coming into this game, but for us, more like um, we'll get into my starting eleven for ne- for them now. Um, and goalkeeper Kyle Courtois again, same with Edison. Uh, you know, something really bad has to happen for Courtois not to start this game. Um, and let's let's go into that back four because it's gonna be Carvajal, Militao, uh, Alaba is gonna be a doubt, but uh, and Mendy is gonna be a doubt, but. I really don't think uh, Carlo Ancelotti has space to 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 use doubts during this game because ultimately I think you have to risk them. This is probably the most important game of the season. Um, this and the second leg are probably the most important games of the season remaining. We we have practically won the league at this point. I think it's four points left to win the league. You know, depending on what happens this this evening with uh, Barcelona. Um, and I think. Ultimately, there is going to be a huge emphasis on Alaba to start this game because without him, we are so much weaker in defence. We just don't have that leadership. You know, I don't think Militao is that leader uh, in, enough in, during the game. Same with Nacho. I don't think he's enough for that leader. And I, I really don't want to see Nacho come up against that front three of Man City uh, and try to, you know, go searching for the ball deep into Man City's half. So it's going to be something um, big that Alaba State plays this game, um, as well as Mendy. Mendy's going to have to play this game now. I think you know Mendy's, Mendy's been criticised quite a lot over this last uh, since since that second leg against Chelsea because Marcelo put in a better performance than than uh, than Furlong Mendy. But I think he's still going to be brilliant uh, brilliant in this first leg. He's going to have to be brilliant in this first leg um, because you know we're going to have to defend quite a lot in this first leg against a brilliant Man City side. So. It's going to have to be, he's going to have to have a big role uh, on that left. You know, he has to, has to stay disciplined, stay solid, uh, and he's going to have to be good in his in his in his ball retention as well, which was was the main problem against Chelsea, where he was quite criticised during that game. Um, but let's move on to that midfield, and it's going to be the, the the standard midfield of Casemiro, Cruz, and Modric. Now, there's going to be obviously doubts about this. I have doubts about this uh, coming up against. You know, probably the best midfield in the world, Rodri, Gundogan, Bernardo Silva, and maybe uh, Kevin De Bruyne in this in this game. It's gonna be it's gonna be uh, really key that they have a good game. To be totally honest, I think you know we we might as well say yeah, Valverde as well at right wing because he's gonna have to have a big game. You know, he's gonna have to basically form four four two 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 compact lines of uh, of of four and then a, a two up top just uh, pressing. Vinny's gonna have to really do well pressing in terms of that. Um, but back to the back to the four four two. This this midfield's gonna have to be really disciplined. I think Valverde is gonna have to have a big big game uh, here. I think he's gonna have to really really run quite a lot, run quite a lot, chase that mental defense uh, and and uh, and midfield. I think you know ultimately we have to make things as uncomfortable as possible uh, for Man City. Do what Atleti did. Just don't give them a spaces in behind. You know if 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 it's gonna have to come down to a Rodri Thunderbolt in the in the eighty fourth minute, then so be it. That's that's just that's just unlucky in the end, isn't it? But 
ultimately we're gonna have to we have to, have to be disciplined during this game um and i i really hope that you know something like a nacho uh, misposition is not going to be the thing because man city players are smart enough to to um make a run make do something well enough to um to, to get in behind and create chances for 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 themselves so we're gonna have to hope that the, this midfield stays solid um, and obviously, come the second half, we're going to have to see um, Rodrigo and and uh, Camavinga come on uh, late into the match as well. You know, Cruz is going to have to come off uh, and Casemiro is most likely going to have to come off as well if, if, if we need a bit more energy in that midfield because we're going to have to need a bit more energy there. But I think the main, you know, the player who's going to have to have the best impact in this game is going to have to Vinny Jr. It's going to be up to him because, you know, Man City are really missing that right back. They're going to have to most likely play Nathan Ake or a youth player there, and or John Stones if he's fit as well. So it's going to be has to be really really big if um, if um, Vinny Jr is going to have to big uh, have a good game because we have to take advantage of this. Cancelo is going to be back for the second leg. Carl Walker most likely will be back for the second leg. We're going to have to really take advantage of that right uh, left wing because um, Vinny Jr is going to have to have a big big game. Getting in behind that right, uh, that that left, uh, that right back, uh, and I think ultimately we're gonna have to create chances for ourselves in this first leg to avoid anything coming down to that second leg um, at the Bernabeu. I think you know ultimately we take a one nil result here um, at the Etihad. We take a one nil result against uh, against City. We'll take a one nil loss against City to be totally honest, because you know coming back to the Santiago Bernabeu, I think it's gonna be huge. And Benzema is going to have to prove why he's the best player in the world once again. Last match uh, against uh, Osasuna, obviously missed two pens. Um, obviously, I'm not going to jump on his back after all he's done this season. I'm not going to do. I'm not going to criticize him that heavily because ultimately it's two pens and it didn't cost us the game, did it? Uh, we still won three one, comfortable win in the end. And um, ultimately, we it didn't really matter. So. Benzema is probably going to be recovered after that. I don't think there's, there's going to be any problems um, after that. And I think Benzema is going to have to have a huge game uh, as well um, because he's going to have to use up some of his hold-up play um, during this game. And he has going to be really good in transition um, because he's going to have to release quite a lot of pressure from our midfield and defence during this game. So that's my thoughts on the on Benzema there. Um, but ultimately, this game could be won and lost in in that midfield uh, and defence of ours. We're gonna have to remain compact, remain uh, remain um, re remain uh, disciplined, and ultimately, I want this this game to go to the second leg for us. City probably don't want that to happen. City would want to do the business in the in the first leg, but we're gonna have to we're gonna have to. I think for us, I think we're gonna have to rely on coming back to the Bernabeu because this is probably going to be the toughest game of the season. This is going to be uh, the best team in the world uh, coming up against a Real Madrid side who have been dodgy at points. We still don't know how good Real Madrid really are. You know, ultimately, you can say that, oh, we beat Chelsea, we beat PSG. Uh, City are a step above. City are a level above uh, PSG and Chelsea. And we're going to have to hope that we... We really defend well, really, you know, play well in that midfield because I think this this game's really going to come down to that. So yeah, that's that's my thoughts on that on that on that on the game. So um, that's it for this for this section of the podcast. Uh, next section, we're obviously going to be discuss um, the Rudiger transfer. So join us after this short interval. Okay, so we are. Close to signing Antonio Rudiger, and that's what the second uh, part of this podcast is about. Um, now, obviously, Antonio Rudiger. A couple of months ago, we were linked with him, and me and Sean both did. Uh, our, we gave our thoughts on him, and we both came to the conclusion that he wouldn't be the correct fit for Real Madrid. We thought maybe someone like Paul Torres, or Jules Kunde, someone like that would probably be a better fit. Um, for for two reasons, um, basically, and we'll get onto those reasons in a second. But uh, you know, ultimately, we are coming close to signing him, and this has come over the space of probably I would say two days, where we've um, really accelerated this deal to to the point where it's reached final uh, the final stages, according to Fabrizio Romano. So. You know, ultimately, we are very, very close to signing Antonio Rudiger on a free transfer. Now, 
Uh, we about other clubs like Bayern Munich, Juventus, Manchester United, uh, PSG, uh, and you know any others. Barcelona. We're all interested in Antonio Rudiger. In the end, we have done it over you know a very short space of uh, time, and you know this has probably come off the back of a. Uh, looking really bad in that Chelsea game defensively where we had we lost Militao and you know aerially we just couldn't compete with Chelsea um largely in part due to the fact that Antonio Rudiger gave them gave them so much in terms of aerially but um you know a couple of months ago me and Sean decided that he wasn't the the right fit but that the change that's changed that's all changed um over these last few months the two concerns are obviously the wage demands as well as the the the, the ability to play in a back four now me and Sean weren't convinced by the that 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 ability uh, because you know previous to previous to Thomas Tuchel he had uh, been asked to play in a back four uh, under under Frank Lampard and he was awful. He was he was generally awful. He was he was just a bit of a a, st- a stupid uh, defender. That's what he, you could des- describe him as. And I feel like uh, he's really improved since then. And you saw, we saw uh, uh, you know a couple of weeks ago um, at, at the Bernabeu at our own turf. He came to uh, he came to the Bernabeu in a back four and he absolutely dominated us. You know. Benzema didn't have a sniff all game long, uh, up until the the goal, obviously, where you know it was probably his fault. Um, but I think ultimately he was brilliant throughout that game. He was brilliant throughout that game, all in all. And I think um, you that that was a real key from him and to have him play so so well. Um, and Chelsea were, you know, got back into the game due to his aerial ability, and I think he brings so much in terms of that, and as well as the fact that he brings so much, you know, he's a born winner. You can see we saw so many times in that game where he was shouting at other players in that Chelsea defence, you know, stuff like, you know, you got to do better, you know, he's shouting at Kante for that for the for the first goal. Um, I don't think it was Kante's fault, but you know, beyond Kante, he was he was you know he wanted that win so so much, and I felt like he con- he certainly contributed a lot to that to that game, um, and I think you know in terms of aerial ability, we've got to we've needed this type of player, but I think the main reason I really like him and something that gives him an edge over over other players is the fact that he is a bit. A bit, yeah, a bit Pepe like. I think he's a bit, you know, he's a bit. Um, what, what can we say? Reckless. I think. I think reckless is the right word to use here. He is a bit reckless with his tackling. He gets quite a lot of yellows uh, and fouls. He gives away a few reds. Um, but I think we do need that. You know, ever since Pepe left, I don't think we've had that in abundance. I think you know Ramos leaving last summer that that got rid of it completely. To be totally honest, I think in, the, in this current squad we're too nice. You know, I mean, you don't look at this squad and fear anyone to come up against. You can see every single time uh, some uh, a fight breaks out in a Chelsea match, it's it's Rudiger in the in the, in the centre of it. And this is what you know the, the it used to be with Pepe and Ramos. We need someone like that. Um, in Tony Rudiger, I think he could bring that, uh, and I think he would be absolutely brilliant at it. Um, and I think you know people may say that that's that's not something you should be praising, but I think you know you've got to have that that ability to annoy the opponents and to 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 be you know a bit of a an annoying opponent to play against. I think you need that. He's he's a player that you know if he's on your team, you love. If he's if you're playing against him, you'll absolutely hate it. And you know we need some of those players. We absolutely do because you know right now you can only say Casemiro is that type of player. And um, as much as I love Casemiro, he's not on. He's not in the greatest form, is he? Right now, and I think Rudiger could genuinely bring that, and I think that would be a brilliant player to 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 bring in. Um, but obviously we'll look at you know in terms of uh, what it would mean for Real Madrid if when if and when the. The, the the signing is confirmed. Me and Sean will do that together. Obviously, he's not here today, um. Uh, so I think you know. Obviously, with that, well, he he we will look at that in full depth, um. But 
all in all, I think it will be a fantastic signing. Uh, and you know, the other other problem I, th- I saw with him was was the wages. Uh, before he was talking for four hundred k per week. I think that adds up to eleven million a year. I might have done something awful there, but um, yeah, ultimately, I think. Um, Actually, no, it doesn't. And there's nowhere there. But um, I think uh, I saw a figure which was uh, 11 million, which was the old uh, 11 million a year, which was the old old um, old wage that he was asking for. Uh, I think that was way too much, and that was probably the main reason for a doubt. Uh, I think uh, that was a, a main major doubt uh, with with um, Antonio Rudiger um, and and his transfer. I think it was 100 percent that type of. Uh, the problem, um, but I think uh, he's he's lowered the the, the wages to seven point five mil- million a year, and for a, for a, for probably one of the best defenders in the world, if not the best defender in the world, I think that might be a bit premature to say that because of uh, Van Dijk and Ruben Diaz. But I think he, he, for one of the best defenders in the world on a free transfer, seven point five million a year, I think it's a four year contract. I think that would be an absolutely fantastic signing, fantastic value for money, um, and it gives us an opportunity to go ahead and sign some more players this summer, some players which we need. I think we've we've looked at it and we we are targeting the right specific market. I was I was worried this summer that we were only going to go for Mbappe and Haaland and that would be it. Uh, because it's it's clear this squad that's just not it for this squad. It's just not enough for this squad. But now we're looking at you know the potential signing of Mbappe, the potential signing of of Rudiger. These two are free signings, and then we're looking at players like um, obviously we've got uh, Shuameni. Look, uh, look, we're looking at him very, very, very intently. With we're focusing on that signing probably after the Rudiger one. Then we're gonna we'll look at Fran Garcia. Uh, and then we're 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 looking at the potential signing of Pedro Porro in as well. Which, you know, for a for a transfer window I think that would be that's probably as good as it can get for us. I think that is truly that is probably going to go down in history as one of the best transfer transfer one of the best transfer windows from a side. I think it brings incredible balance to the squad, I think, and it brings incredible squad depth to the squad. I think, you know, we've needed a bit more of that um, from the squad all in all. I think all all of those signings bring incredible squad depth. You know, someone like Frank Garcia, you may not look at that and think of a blockbuster signing. However, it does bring it some squad depth in, in a position where we're going to need it. You know, unfortunately, this is going, probably going to be Marcelo's last season. And, you know, I remember at the start of the season talking with Sean about uh, how Marcelo wasn't going to have a great season and he looked lethargic once again. He's had a good season, I, I, I would argue, Marcelo. You know, he's, he's not been, you know, it hasn't been one of the best seasons. Uh, obviously, he's, 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 pretty, he's past it, but, you know, for, for a guy who's been the backup left back, I think he's had a good season. And I'm, I'm, I'm happy with what Marcelo has contributed this season. And I think if we brought in Fran Garcia, I think it would be... You know, it's not someone who would be absolutely lighting the world up on fire, but I think he's a he's a player that we could use, and I think this Rudiger signing would enable that. You know, someone on a free, I think he would enable uh, the ability to sign. You know, three other players maybe in the summer, and I think that is what we need. I I I'm I'm one to say that we we probably don't need Haaland as much as others say. Um, I think you know, if City. If City win him, if City have won the battle already, then just let them. Let them have City at Haaland at this point. I think it's not a necessity. Um, so that's my thoughts on Haaland. But back to back to Rudiger. I think he, this is this is a very very good signing. I'm very very happy um, with with this uh, with this bit of business from 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 Florentino Perez. I think it, this is this is a bit of a master stroke. So. Yeah, I'm I'm very very happy. Um, obviously we'll look at the tactical side when when this hap- when the side transfer actually happens. Me and Sean will obviously look at that in depth. But apart from that, that's that's probably it for this week's uh, Los Blancos podcast. Um, obviously go check out Sean um, in the, in the in the description. Go drop him a follow. Real Madrid committee um, on Instagram. Uh, so go drop him a follow. He posts the best daily news about Real Madrid um, but apart from that next week there will not be a podcast I am not here I'm away so I do apologize for that in advance but um, yeah I'll see you guys in two weeks uh, have a good one and I'll see you guys later bye bye